do you shake up old school industries and make a mint doing it? To find out, I'm about to cook some bugs, cleanse my privates, and risk my life to conquer an old fear. May break my nose, but it will be good TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm T-Pain. You know me as a musician. <laughs> But what you don't know is that I'm a businessman, and I'm obsessed with finding the newest tech, science, newest food, newest culture, newest everything. Oh, man. I'm taking my curiosity on the road to meet the entrepreneurs who are defining the future. I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I'm going to get a feel for their companies and find out how they turn their ideas into reality. We raised a few million dollars. Genius. This is T-Pain's School of Business. <laughs> Everybody knows T-Pain loves cars. At one point, I had 36 cars all to myself. It was bad management. The only thing I hate about cars is being in traffic. It's bad everywhere. It's traffic, which is why everybody has been talking about rideables as the solution for traffic. In the next five years, personal electric vehicles are projected to become a $40 billion a year global industry. That's if people like me can get out of their cars. I'm not sure that's going to happen. So far, my only rideable experience has been the original hoverboard. We all know what happened with that. Fires, explosions, small batteries on big motors. The first time I got on a hoverboard, it was in Snoop Dogg's house. And now he has a T-Pain-sized hole in his wall. I am so sorry. That was not my intention, but I told you not to try to teach me how to ride that thing in the house. I'm going right now to meet my homegirl, Rose Wong, from In Motion, a company that wants to get people out of their cars. I'm the CEO of In Motion USA. What I take care of is revolutionizing human mobility, mm. uh, getting more people into using sustainable electric transportation. When you look at cities and urban settings, mm. you see a lot of urban congestion, carbon emissions. So our job here is really to educate people about what there is to use for sustainable transportation. Remember, kids, you're not stuck in traffic. You are the traffic. Rose is taking the car out of the car dealership. Instead of carbon-emitting, traffic-creating cars, Rose's dealership is selling electric rideables. Rose co-created the scooter board, along with the group of Chinese engineers she found through social media. Her genius is that she came up with the idea to sell not only her creation, but a fleet of rideables. You're <laughs> actually standing right next to the start of it all, scooter board. It looks like a scooter, but it rides like a skateboard. That's more of my speed right there. <laughs> what do we have here? These are the hover shoes. <laughs> They're the first prototypes in the entire Western Hemisphere. Man. Basically, a hoverboard except without the middle bridge. That wouldn't be me. I'd immediately do the splits. Right there, right in the middle. Would you like to try the hover shoes? I really need space. I'm gonna fall pretty dramatically. Rose has me convinced to give these rideables a try. Now, the scary thing is, I'm pretty clumsy. I don't have that much of a good balance. So, possibly may break my nose, but it will be good TV. And that's what we're here for. Oh, boy. Why don't you put one foot on, see how you like it, and then we don't have to commit to both if you're not feeling it. I'm already, because I'm... You want us to show you first? You're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So you just start with one foot at a time. If you keep your foot flat, just like this, there you go. None of this is happening with me at all. This seems like an easy thing. But my brain <laughs> and the way it works. It just takes a few minutes. <sighs> Why don't you go for a ride on the P1F? Do they have handles? Yeah. Let's do the mini e-bike. Yes. Here is the throttle. All right. OK, and don't forget the most important part, the horn. That is the most important part. <laughs> All right. Let's get the show on the road. <laughs> this is it. This is, this is the one. <laughs> Out of the way. <laughs> I don't think he needs any help. Why rideable? It started really when I was in my full-time job. It actually took an hour at least to commute into work every single day. Being frustrated with the commute, I knew there had to be another solution. That's when I got in contact with the engineering team in China, and we started talking about solutions. And so we started out with Scooterboard on Kickstarter. That actually reached its funding goal nice. within the first 48 hours. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yes. So that gave us the confidence <laughs> to move forward and right. really build a company around mm -hmm. it. Pizzle tip. Have something for everyone. 
Rose wants to be the car dealership of the future, she's pretty much proved that she's well on her way. What gave you the courage to dive right into entrepreneurship? I've actually been an entrepreneur all my life. I was born in China. I came from a pretty impoverished area. I would love drawing in my daycare. I started selling cartoon characters for 25 cents. And then in high school, I started importing Asian cosmetics and beauty products into the Western Hemisphere. And I made pretty good money. I don't think my strength is in a nine to five. I wanted to do something where I could change our society for the better. Get out there and make it happen. Exactly. So what did we learn today? I mean, Rose got me out of my car. <laughs> Rose hated her commute. I mean, we all do. But instead of complaining about it, she did something about it. Start your own business around your problem, create the solution. Just find something you hate and start something to get rid of it. Can't do anything about your dad. You gotta figure that out on your own. Persistence, people. Laugh in the face of adversity, get your shit together, and maybe you'll be riding the streets in style like T-Pistol. Coming up on T-Pain's School of Business. Can there be a billion dollar maggot idea? I'ma see for myself. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that was terrible. Then I meet a woman who's disrupting a whole industry. Would you want your penis to smell that way? You know anything about me, you know I don't fuck with bugs. Not even a little. Nope. But apparently, they're about to change the face of agribusiness as we know it. I don't know it, but I'm here to meet Sean and Pat, cousins and founders of Grubbly Farms. They create animal feed out of baked fly larvae. They're cooking food for chickens. Animal feed is a $70 billion a year business. And that's just in the US. I don't know if you guys know what a unicorn is, but it's definitely not a horse with one horn on his head that shits rainbows and pisses mayonnaise. A unicorn is Silicon Valley talk for a business that has a billion dollar valuation. Grubbly Farms has the potential to become a unicorn. I don't like bugs, but I do love money. What's going on? This is Grubbly Farms. Yeah, Surprisingly welcome. clean. So what's the... Um... What's the operation here? We're developing a sustainable processed fly larva animal feed. What was the motivation behind, yep, let's do oh, this. Yes. Sean and I were, were living together at the time, and uh, he actually came to me and proposed this idea. He's like, I think bugs are going to be the future. And uh, surprisingly enough, I'm actually terribly, terribly afraid of pretty much all bugs. We got something in common there, yeah. so that's right. cool. All actually, right. the original idea was to create a burger patty out of insects that we could sell in Southeast Asia or Africa as the kind of westernized version of what they eat over there. So we actually blended uh, grubs with black beans and you baked sure it into did. a burger patty, and being completely honest, it was kind of disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> we slowly realized pretty much how much big of an impact uh, raising insects can have on, on the planet, and that's what led us down the the path to raising black soldier fly grubs. Here you can see our actual first product. So this is the dried larva. I am ready for the smell of this. They actually smell pretty good. Oh, that doesn't smell bad. <laughs> right? It smells like old bacon, but... It's a bit nutty. Oh. <laughs> see, that's not bad, right? You can't even tell they're bugs. I can very much tell they're bugs. <laughs> you can't tell those are bugs? Yeah, they're not too bad. For chickens. Uh, you want some? For TV purposes, we're gonna say I had them. So uh, now that we've seen the end product, let's go take a look and see how the grubs are actually made. Oh shit, this got big. This is a bin of the grubs. So below this dirt, which is oh, God, it's moving. Ah. the grub poop, there's thousands Woo, and thousands boy. of these guys. This does not feel great. Kind of oddly satisfying yeah. feeling them crawling not, on. It's not, not even a little, <laughs> not even a little. Here's a pocket of straight grubs. Oh, that's way worse. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. That was bad, that was bad. How do we get from this to what I held earlier? That actually starts with uh, 
basically breeding flies. How does one go about breeding flies? That's actually where the secret sauce lies. They breed very well under natural sunlight, obviously, but getting them to breed under artificial conditions is quite difficult, and that's actually what we've been focusing on. Jesus. Once the babies reach about this size is when we actually can start feeding them to food waste. In this barrel, we actually have some spent brewery grains that we pick up from a local brewery around here. The larvae will eventually come up to the surface, and we take a portion of our larva population, let them mature, and then continue the breeding aspect. Absolutely. But the majority of it goes into the rest of the processing. These eventually turn into our end product. Over 50 million tons of food waste every year are landfilled. And food waste actually decomposes into methane, a greenhouse gas, over 20 times more harmful to the environment than CO2. So by the larva eating through this, it's uh, preventing greenhouse gases being emitted right. and offering a solution to the food waste issue that the United States has. This is our old sifting machine. It separates the substrate from the larva. All right, let's get this going. Oh, uh, <laughs> there's so many bugs in there. Woo. What this actually is, is the larva poop, and this is actually a pretty high quality fertilizer. Substrate is, is... poop. It has a bunch of different uh, potential industries that it can be sold into. You selling shit? Yes. Yes, we are. The super dope thing about Grubbly Farms is that their main source of income makes more of their source of income. Grubs become flies, making more grubs. Kaching! Grubs eating food waste. Companies will pay for that trash to be hauled away. Kaching! Grubs pooping becomes fertilizer. Kaching! These larvae shit money. This is kind of our old school version, but now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you step this up into the more uh, industrial commercial look. come out of the oven dry. This is really what the product of, that you pulled out of the bag earlier. Let me get some of that. Uh, they're not moving now. Nope. This is much better than earlier. Coming up on T-Pain's School of Business, I'll meet some chickens. You chick. <laughs> See what I did? Grubbly Farm just found out the direct reason why you want to sell everything. It's just way more money. They sell the larva, they sell the shit. They make more larva, you come back, make that into food, more larva, and they just keep shitting and keep producing more money. But the one thing that could fuck up all that process is if the chickens don't like it. I'll tell you what, they got chickens in the back. The focus group right in the goddamn building. One hold Is there a process, is there a no, you certain just put, technique? You just put your hands around the wings. Yeah. And if they start flapping, just drop it like that. <laughs> 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 if you want to oh, walk a couple shit. paces, oh. and they'll come charging, hopefully. Please don't charge. You're charging. You're charging. I just said don't charge. <laughs> you can uh, take it running. They'll come right after. Yeah, that, that's some Jurassic Park shit that I'm just not <laughs> prepared for. Chickens do come from dinosaurs. Oh, my god. <laughs> <sighs> one whole little peep? I will hold a little peep. Yay! Oh, this is lit. Oh, don't walk off the edge, buddy. Cute chick. The focus group was a success. But I still got a lot of questions for Sean and Pat. Where do you guys see the business going? How, how, big, how big would you say this is gonna be? Being that there's a $70 billion pot out there. I think there's definitely gonna be a billion dollar insect company within the next five years, if not multiple of them. We're really looking to work with as many other insect producers as possible just to help get the entire industry off the ground. Once it gets some traction, then that's where uh, the real competition will begin. You really got a dope product that kind of I don't see how it's not paying for itself. Mm -hmm. It's getting there. It's the insect industry. There's still a stigma of insects in Western society, right, okay, but I feel okay. like we're on that tipping point that it's becoming adopted more and more over time. Here's my question. Do you even notice the flies anymore? Do you even swat at them anymore? Uh, no. it... Not I... the soldier flies. They're the most chill insect ever. OK, that makes sense. It just feels like getting pooped on a bunch every yeah, time. It happens. Some people like that. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I guess you're not wrong. <laughs> I'm sure some people do. <laughs> Grubbly Farms is what I now believe to be insect gold by offering up a more healthy and more sustainable alternative to 
everything that's happening in the animal feed industry right now. All that's left now is scale, growth, and, and billions of dollars. Coming up on T-Pain School of Business, I learned that you can never be too clean. What's happening now? Am I playing a tree in a school play? Yeah. Super hot in Atlanta, all the time. My bag is sweating right now. Swamp everything, nobody wants that. So I'm about to meet somebody who's gonna cure all this swamp ass, hopefully mostly for the club and afterwards. A lot of dancing going on, a lot of swamping is building up. Beatrice Espada, she's the founder and CEO of The Honey Pot, and she's capitalizing on the popularity of the wellness industry. In fact, the global wellness industry is now worth almost four trillion dollars. There's only been a few companies telling half of the human population how to take care of themselves, and that's the vagina industry which I found out a lot of them are ran by old dudes. <clears throat> These big companies have been using the same formulas for 100 years now, and here comes Beatrice, cleaning up the feminine hygiene industry. Tell me what we got going on here. We are a plant-based feminine hygiene system. Mm, okay. So we do external vulva washes and pads and wipes. Just a whole slew of things. Everything that women need to take care of themselves. Okay, what was your thoughts on what we like to call big vagina? Most conventional menstrual products are cleaned with a chemical soup that is chlorine bleach, acetone, furans, dioxins, formaldehyde even sometimes. Women have a lot of issues because what they're using on a monthly basis, absorbing right, that. it's absorbing all those things. Oh boy. How does one go about getting into this? Getting into this business? Yeah. Honestly, I had an almost year-long bacterial vaginosis infection. Okay, which, now. That shit was terrible, uh, right? Uh, That'll make yeah. you figure some shit out, won't yeah. it? And so, um, yeah, it's crazy. I'm so sorry. One night, you know how, like, right before you wake up, sometimes you dream? The and lucid guy. Lucid kind yeah, of a yeah. dream, right? And I was sitting down with one of my ancestors, just like I'm sitting and talking to you. And she basically gave me a list of ingredients and said, when you wake up, try it. Okay. I literally woke up, wrote it down, but I just put it together in kitchen ingredients. And I tried it, and it was like a gift, and it worked. That's how I cut my hair the first time. <laughs> my uncle came to me in a dream and told me to do it. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. You, so you see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely, so, yeah. That's why so I'm not makes, like, you're crazy. No, no so, I'm not so, totally it, so it makes sense. Yeah. I was working at Whole Foods at that time. I was thinking like, Damn, I see all these brands coming in here. Maybe I need to develop a brand. And then it was just like, light bulb. T-Pain tip, follow your dreams. Literally. If somebody comes to you in your dreams and say you need to take care of the rest of the vaginas in the world, then absolutely go do that. This is how I used to make my stuff. Everything kind of starts off with water. So this is like a coconut oil, kind of like a okay. Castile soap. So I don't need no gloves, no. You're good, bro, it's not. Nothing. You could drink this shit if you wanted to. You sure? I promise you. I get that, it's natural. You know what else is natural? Bears. They'll f gay. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. That sure did do that. Really nice foam. see what's going on here. Would you want your penis to smell that way? It's a little minty. It's I just, just different. Yeah. The smell is amazing. Okay. Is there a big team involved? There is only six of us. Okay, now. But <laughs> we just wrapped up an investment round. We just raised a few million dollars. That's what the hell I'm talking and, about. And um, when you're in a consumer packaged goods company, you have to go to a supplier, which they call a co-packer. Okay. Right? They have testing. Okay. They have everything. So yeah. it's like having that <laughs> type of investment partner. Yes, there's only six of us, but we've got mm -hmm. like a machine back here that, right, right, right. that we can just pull on for anything. Star wipe. Bam. Now we're gonna practice what B preaches. We're gonna research the wellness industry right from the inside in a dope ass spa. So we're about to give you a veggie facial. We're about to feed your skin. B, when you started making your product, right? Mm -hmm. Did it seem like people thought that you were crazy trying to go to these different stores and companies? And we got into Target, mm -hmm. right? We were very fortunate because the buyer went to her hairdresser to get her hair done. And her hairdresser told her about Honey Pot. So in this instance, Target came to us. Ah. But that's the easy part. When they say yes, <laughs> now you're and like, work oh, start? wait. <laughs> that means I got to find some money, mm -hmm. you know? When a big retailer wants to carry your product, congrats. Now you have to actually make enough to stock the shelves. That takes money from investors, people. 
What's happening now? <laughs> wow. What is this? You're getting organic spinach leaves. Am I playing a tree in the school Yes, play? so that this restores the pH balance of the skin. All right. One of the things that people said that I was crazy about is because when we were raising the capital to just get into Target with the washes and wipes, I knew that we had to figure out a way to then launch pads. So a lot of people said that I was crazy because they were like, you haven't even found the money for your washes and wipes. Like, how you gonna? You gotta be a little crazy to be in a startup life. You have to really believe that you can do anything. B started in her kitchen, mixing up these ingredients that she got from one of her ancestors. And now she's part of the multi-trillion dollar wellness industry. That's awesome. People are always gonna say you're crazy, and people, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. So the moral of the story is take advantage of your craziness. Because whether it's new transportation, animal feed, or feminine care, you gotta be kinda crazy to dream up the future. Class dismissed.